But I do appreciate, I do appreciate so much Elder Epley. And I uh, was thinking a little bit about it this morning. Uh, this man has blessed many, many conference settings, anniversary services, camp meetings around this country uh, numerous, numerous times. And uh, we count it a high honor that he is with us here this afternoon. Praise God. He has been a, a blessing to me personally. And the numerous times that I've heard him teach and preach through the years. And uh, I hope you'll just allow me just even a, some more personal, real personal. But Brother Epley, uh, back in my beginning days when I was a single man. <laughs> 21 years ago, in fact. The first of this year uh, was kind to me personally. And uh, open up the doors of the church, his pulpit to me. And uh, those things that I, I don't forget. And I uh, certainly love and appreciate this good man of God. We want him to come today. And uh, we want him to teach the way he feels, preach the way he feels. Amen. I feel like there is a, a common thread among the brethren here that are sponsors of this, this camp. Uh, number one, he's here because we're not worried about him saying something goofy. Just to put it bluntly. Amen. And I uh, made the statement here not long ago at one of our meetings. I don't have open pulpit. The little church I'm trying to pastor, it's not opened. Amen. It's a respected pulpit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the caliber of men that are teaching and preaching this meeting. Men that believe that as well. Amen. We want Elder Epley to come today and take his liberty. Everyone say, Lord, bless Elder Epley. Thank you so very much. Can you praise the Lord? Amen. Well, you may be seated. Well, you can tell I'm a high-tech guy. I feel comfortable here. I was Kentucky-born. And when I die, I'll be Kentucky dead. Praise God. I'm a fellow Kentuckian. I just live in Missouri. I, I swap one set of hills for another. You get that hillbilly stuff in you, you know, you just ain't happy anywhere else. And I was, Brother Alvaro was so kind to drive me over here in his, in his truck. Truthfully, he was afraid of my driving. He's just trying to be kind. But... Uh, he would join many that are just like him, praise God. Most folks, if they're not prayed through, when they get in the car, they are when they get out. <laughs> That's just kind of how it works, praise God. I'm so honored that these brethren would ask us to come. And I tell them, Brother Alviar, I said, man, we're getting a little long in the tooth for this. I mean, you know, I'm... I'm I'm heading towards 70. I had my 67th birthday in April. And the years ain't all that bad. It's all them miles. The miles that's on them cars is what eats it up. And uh, a lot of, lot, lot of miles. I was thinking, uh, goodness. I started preaching when I was 15. And uh, they did that in Kentucky, praise God. And uh, so uh, I pastored when I was 19. Now, that's really crazy. I had about as much business pastor 19 as I would be driving an airplane today. But nevertheless, that's how it was done. Amen. But, uh, but I, I have survived all these years, and I'm, and I'm happy in the journey. I do want to thank you, brethren, for inviting us, I guess. <laughs> Amen. I'm honored and uh, good to see. I, I like old friends. I like new friends, but I like I like old friends. My uh, brother Alviar was saying last night, was that was that good preaching last night or what? Amen. Well, now he was getting warmed up. We hope he'll do better tonight. Amen. We're planning on him doing a little bit better. He's a little tired in his body. And going to expect a little bit more out of him tonight. But uh, 
We appreciate my old friends and thank you for the kind room and the nice room and the, the basket and uh, uh, sister. Uh, I gotta be careful, you know. Now, if 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 I slip and call Brother Manners John, it's I'm not demeaning him. That's just who he was. I mean, he was John when he was that old Catholic boy that stepped in the church that day. Didn't want to come, didn't want to be there, had no desire to be there. We was having a Sunday school contest. And Sister Kelly, which again, Sister Manners, her grandmother was living with her and she was something else. She invited them and, and wasn't going to take no for an answer. And uh, Brother Manners had no desire. You could see it all over him. What am I doing in this crazy place? And uh, uh, and but it was you was lucky. It was a, it was on a Sunday morning. Now, church in Indiana on Sunday morning is generally very slow. Matter of fact, Brother Boyd told the church there said. I hate to tell you, but your pastor don't does not tell the truth. He said that y'all was slow on Sunday morning. He said, you got to move to be slow. <laughs> he said, y'all ain't slow, y'all are stopped. Praise God. So, so he was lucky. Uh, uh, we wasn't acting all that crazy like y'all was running here a while ago. And, uh, uh, but, uh, but something got a hold of him. And uh, uh, I never will forget, he, he, he wanted to meet me at the church, and I was happy to meet him. And, and of all the theological questions he could ask me, 31,173 verses in the Bible he could ask me about, and he asked me about that old scroggly mustache that he had. I mean, he said, do I have to shave my mustache? I told him, I said, if I couldn't grow a mustache any better than that, I'd shave it <laughs> in self-defense. I said, you are a disgrace to the mustache people. Shave it off. And I didn't try to get some chimney corner scripture like the Lord shave with a razor or some goofy thing like that. I just told him, you got a choice. You can look like your drinking buddies out there, or you can look like us. That, well, that worked for him. Well, praise the Lord. And, uh, and uh, then got to meet Brother Carter and these other good brethren, because I've known Brother Phillips since he is a, well, he is a young uh, evangelist. I don't know, how old are you now, Brother Phillips? 46, so oh, man, you, well, I met him when he was young, he was young when I met him, he, he preached for us, he was a teenager, and my good friend, brother Turner, Lord, we've been down a lot of roads together, most of them was dead in the streets, praise God, we had to back back out, huh, but I'm glad our car had a reverse in it, ain't you, remember seeing Brother Smith and Brother Creech, man, seeing Brother Creech at Madisonville, Lord, that's back in the last century, wasn't it? Amen. And all you other brethren, I'm so glad to have met y'all. And, and uh, uh, we all got shouting and everything. I thought I might get, uh, I ain't used folks shouting in Bible class. Y'all didn't get that memo? No shouting in Bible class. But I thought, man, they're going to take it away from me. And I'm just going to cry and cry. But, hey, here we are. I don't know how long I'm supposed to be up here. And, uh, 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 but I really prayed about this. Truthfully. I believe you all be truthful, don't you? At least while I'm up here, huh? <laughs> Amen. Don't lie a whole lot. Just everyone's not this bad. I'm just messing with you. But really, I was supposed to have been here teaching last year. I don't know what, I don't remember what happened. I don't know what I told Brother Manners. It's some big tale, praise God. <laughs> you know, if you got enough folks there, you can get somebody sick or dying. That's always. Amen. If you ain't, you can kind of look at somebody. Don't you kind of feel bad? <laughs> it's 
said, you kind of look bad. So you call that pastor up, I cannot come. That, I got a saint here, it's in terrible condition. And I can't go, no, I, I, don't, I don't remember what it was. Amen. When you get like me, if I believed in hiding Easter eggs, which I don't, but if I did, I could hide my own and never find them. So that's the, that's the benefit of, of getting older. Well, I don't want to scare the daylights out of you, but I've got several scriptures to read. <laughs> Are you all ready for this? Yes, sir. Amen. And I didn't come here to, I told Brother Manners, uh, you know, I, I, I come in peace, praise the Lord. I didn't come declaring war on anybody. Uh, amen. I'm ready to be, beat the swords in the plowshares and study war no more, praise God. I believe in fighting the enemy and the devil and the world. But I'm through with fighting brethren. If you want to fight some brethren, you can find somebody else. I've had all that that I ever want to have. My cup is full and running over. Praise God. Amen. Not our, we have camp meeting every year. I've, I've got the local UPC pastor comes out. He's not even scared of getting killed. Got a WPF pastor comes out. And then all the 14 dozen tribes of independence. You know, we, we got all 12 tribes of Pentecost wines up there at the house. And we try to treat them all good. Amen. Jesus died for all of them. He loved them enough. He gave them all the Holy Ghost and they're baptized in Jesus' name. Some of them's climbing a little higher than me, and I'm, I'm trying to climb a little higher. Some of them a little lower than me. Pray, I don't seem like they're climbing too good. I want to help them out a little bit, praise God. But I'm not here for war, I don't guess. But, of course, that could switch any time, praise the Lord. If you'll stand with me. Thank you again for the invitation. And... Uh, Good spirit here. I, I'm I'm really shocked at this day crowd. Uh, boy, a lot of meetings anymore. They've dismissed day crowds because uh, we're not in the. I don't know what somebody hadn't sent y'all that memo. We're not in a time where folks like Bible teaching anymore. I mean, they're in the. But evidently, since y'all didn't get the memo and they sent me, we're gonna have it. I loved that when I was growing up and uh, still love it today. Ephesians chapter 1. I will try to read these passages hurriedly. 1 and 22. And it put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that feeleth, filleth all in all, gave him to be the head. 4 and 15. Speaking the truth in love, grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together, compacted by that which every joint supplieth. Man, we saw that today, didn't we? That little lady come out from that seat and got moving up here and worshiping the Lord. And the next thing you know, you had another one come out from over there. And the atmosphere changed. So what was happening? Well, the joints were supplying. All the service is not necessarily encompassed here. Well, praise the Lord. That's Catholicism. That's Catholicism. Where they translated the Bible in the Latin and changed it to the pulpit where the people couldn't read it. Amen. Where you had one guy up there talking in Latin and folks not understand what's being said. But ain't you glad you're in the Lord's body? Wherever joint supplieth according to the effectual working of the measure of every part. Every part is important. 
You ever smash your big toe? Your little finger? Beer, a bee sting your ear? Something hot burn on your tongue? Every part of the body is important. Make it the increase of the body and the edifying of itself in love. Five and twenty-three. If, for even as a husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, he is the Savior of the body. Colossians 1.18 He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. He is the head of the body. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord is good. Let's praise him. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness and your love. Thank you for your mercy. Jesus, you're such a good God. I praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, help me today to be a blessing to your people, Lord. Oh, your great people, Father. Those you purchased with your blood. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you today, if I can, for a little while, on Jesus, the head of the church. Jesus, the head of the church. I, I tried this out a little bit on Sunday morning. See if it worked for them folks. See if it might work for you. Didn't work for them all that good, so I'm going to give it a second shot. Amen. Jesus, the head of the church. You know, I get a little, I get a little, uh, uh, I've always been a little put off by this. And uh, forgive me if it seems like I'm, I'm being petty, but uh, I, I, uh, it's always made me squeamish for somebody to say, I go to Brother Epley's church. Number one, Brother Epley don't have a church. I don't know many of you folks ever remembered the late Bishop David Ellis from Detroit built that huge P.A.W. Church, sir. I mean, uh, one time probably had around 3,000 members. I mean, if he kept at it, he'd have a good-sized crowd. You know what I mean? 3,000 folks. And they had just built that uh, uh, church, and I was preaching not far from there. And a preacher took me to see it. Since then, he's died, and he wasn't as strong as he ought to have been anyhow, but his son has kind of apostatized it since then but bishop ellips i heard him say that he was uh, uh going downtown detroit to do some work and this drunk uh staggered in front of him in his car he almost hit him he threw on his brakes he said first he kind of got upset and then he thought to himself well i need to do a little personal work myself he said he got the drunk and said hey let, let me take you home you're gonna get hurt and he got the uh, the drunk and put him in the car and found out where he lived and he's driving him across town and Bishop Ellis said I thought I would do a little uh, personal work with uh, this drunk and I said he said sir did you ever think about giving your life to God and the drunk looked at him and said me I'm one of Bishop Ellis saints And uh, he didn't even recognize, he's so drunk, he didn't even recognize he's in the car with Bishop Ellis. And Bishop Ellis said,
Well, that's probably the truth. That would be the kind of saint that I would have. A man would be a drunk. And truthfully, we're in the Lord's church. Now, Brother Manners might be your pastor, but it ain't his church. Jesus purchased this church with his own blood. Amen. If you drained every drop of blood out of me, it couldn't purchase a church. It couldn't forgive a sin. You could beat me till, till you couldn't recognize me. It wouldn't heal a an of a headache. You could wound me and bruise me, and it wouldn't do a thing for you. Oh, but he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon him, and with his stripes you're healed, body, soul, and spirit. Says church, he is the head, he is the head of the church. If Brother Manners will help me here, in Colossians 2, 18 and 19, We gonna we go. Can I just take? Can I just meander around here? It's kind of. I'm in a meandering mood. And I've got several notes here now. I've, I, and I don't. I don't know where all this will go. Uh, am I doing something wrong? What's that? Yeah. You gonna give him a mic? Good grief. Now, you ain't getting no check. You do know that, don't you? You writing checks out, you're not getting any. You got to watch giving folks microphones. Next thing you know, they want you offering. Just they want to. Amen. How did I get myself into this? This is dangerous. Have you found it? Oh, yeah. That's in the New Testament. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Colossians 2. Let no man beguile you of your reward. Yes. In a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. You know, you can act like you're humble all day long, but that don't make you humble. Now, we in part of Kentucky I was raised in. They got so humble, and they were so, they didn't, they wasn't proud of nothing. They wouldn't say they're proud of anything. I mean, they, they X that from their vocabulary. They were happy. They were thankful, but they wasn't proud. Matter of fact, they were pretty proud they wasn't proud. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, so everything that looks like humility is not necessarily humility. And it says in the one... Intruding into those things which yes. he hath not seen... Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Well, he missed the worshiping of angels. That's what you get when you get a bad reader. Amen. I read that. Did you read that? Yes, sir. Well, you've done good. Praise Let me read it again. No, I don't want you okay. to read it again. We're getting to verse 19. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment. We don't need to make a joint the head. Mm -hmm. If you make a joint the head, it ain't got any sense. I don't care how much you appreciate your joints, they can't think. You can survive without a big toe. You can survive without a hand. Matter of fact, they do kidney transplants, lung transplants, heart transplants. They don't do any brain transplants. Yeah, that's right. You can't make it without the head. You can make it without any other part of the body besides the heart. But they can give you another one then. But you cannot make it without. When you're brain dead, you're dead. They're not bringing you back. 
I don't care how much they got that heart beating. I don't care how much they got that lungs are going. When the brain is dead, you're gone. Not holding the head. I, 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 I've done this for years. Hope you brethren will forgive me. I have a 26 translation. John remembers that, that I used to use quite a bit. And I printed some of these off. Uh, the different translations of this this particular part of this verse. And the 20th uh, century New Testament says, fails to maintain union with the head. Philip says, cleverly forgetting the head. The international version said, they have lost connection with the head. New English Bible said not holding fast to the head. Berean study Bible said losing connection to the head. Berean literal Bible says not holding fast to the head. Good news translation says they have stopped holding on to the head. The word English Bible said not firmly holding to the head. Disconnected from the head. You can disconnect your foot. And you may hobble around, but you can make it. You may lose your hand. There's folks that go to war and they become home as amputees with no legs and no arms. But they wind up making it. Kidneys, liver. Various parts of your body, you can survive. You cannot survive without the head. Paul said there are some teachers and saints in the church that have become disconnected to the head. Well, glory to God. I want to be with the bunch that's got their headquarters in heaven. The headquarters is where the head is quartered. Praise God. I wouldn't want my headquarters to be in Rome or Nashville or any place here on the earth. I was in a meeting years ago. Oh, man, hadn't been married very long at a place in Palachi, Florida. And uh, if you're in this group, I'm not trying to offend you. I'm not saying anything to offend anybody. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm offensive across the board, praise God. And, but the, the name of this group was The Church of Jesus Christ. And they believed that uh, you had to have that name over the door. Of course, they wasn't having church in Russia or in Czechoslovakia or China. Because they wouldn't want nobody to find the door. You know, some things are just stupid. Now, if you believe that, I love you, but you're, you're stupid. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. But they, 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 the name of the church was the Church of Jesus Christ. And I, I, I was in this meeting, and, and uh, uh, I seen this fellow sitting over there on the corner, and uh, a little older, and, and they, all of the folks was. So we're so glad to have the head of the Church of Jesus Christ here tonight. I ain't about 10, 11 preachers tonight. I keep looking at that guy. So they finally got around to me, which wasn't a good idea. Showed they wasn't connected to the head. I said, this is the most disappointing Service I've ever been in in my life. I've never been as disappointed as I am tonight. I said, I'm, brother, I'm sure you're a good fellow, but if you're the head of the church of Jesus Christ, I read when I see you, I'm going to be like you because I'm going to see you as you are. I get that. Praise God. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I mean, that was a disappointing deal. But I'm going to see the head one day. Jesus said, I am the true vine. We got a vine that's not growing out of the earth. 
But we got a vine that's coming down from heaven. We're just branches that are in the vine. But the vine is not of the earth. The vine is coming down from heaven. We're connected to that heavenly vine. Got that heavenly sap. Which is the Holy Ghost flowing through us. The church of Jesus Christ. Man, I don't want to cry. I ain't up here to cross sword, but you know how I was, John, when you got me out here. So you know I can go loco just any time. Amen. The church of Jesus Christ is an organism. That's right. It's alive. It is not an organization. That's right. That's right. Now, I'm going to tell you the difference between an organism and an organization. And all you Kentuckians will understand this. This is an organization. It's right here. Curious. Now, that right out there that's got the leaves on it, that's an organism. Now, at one time, this was an organism. Some man went in the woods and cut it down. Some man packed it out. Some man cut it up. Some man put it together. And some man toted it in here and set it in here. It ain't never going to have any leaves. It's never going to have any berries. It's never going to have any fruit. It, it can serve a purpose. It's holding my Bible right now. There ain't nothing wrong with it. It can serve a purpose. But it ain't an organism. But you see them trees out there? They're organisms. They're alive. Oh, in the winter, it may look like they're dead. They're not dead. They are alive. In season, they're going to bloom again. This church is an organism. It's got Holy Ghost sap flowing through it. I've got so many directions that I can go. And uh, man, when you read 1 Corinthians 12, you know, it's about the operation of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and the moving of the Spirit and and. Uh, that's what makes us different from any religious body in the world. That's right. Is because we depend on the Spirit. Amen. I'm debating on doing this. I, I really am. Uh, I don't want to bore the stuffings out of you. But I love Pentecostal history. And I ain't much of a preacher, but I'm a Pentecostal historian. I love Pentecostal history. Now, let me say at the outset, I believe there was a one God, Jesus' name, tongue-talking church that was preaching the truth from the day of Pentecost until now. I do not believe in the light doctrine, the Reformation doctrine, or any other goofy name you want to call it. But somewhere on this earth, it may have got down to a flicker. But there was somebody somewhere preaching this truth and if you could not find it in any history book it really doesn't matter to me Jesus said on this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and I'm going to stand on that amen uh, oh yeah I'm going to stand on that it don't matter what, what you find anywhere so I believe in the continuing church However, if you didn't recognize something happened at the turn of the last century, you're just willingly ignorant. Now, whatever it was, when I was growing up, they called it the latter rain. I don't know what took place. But at a little old Bible college in Topeka, Kansas, there was 
a couple dozen students, and they were studying the book of Acts. And the man that was over them was a man by the name of Charles Parham. And uh, he told them, he was going off for a couple weeks, and said, I want you to read the book of Acts and see if you see any continuity in there that would tell when someone receives the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When he got back off of his trip, they had unanimously come up with the uh, idea, thought, or concept that everybody that received the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts, if it told what they'd done, they spoke in tongues. And none of them had, none of them had, had, had spoken in tongues. So they decided to have a prayer meeting. And way late in the night, a little woman by the name of Agnes Oseman began to speak in a language that she had never learned. And before the uh, uh, week or two was out, the majority of them had. Now, Charles Parham hadn't yet, so they went down in... in uh, Galena, Kansas, Baxter Springs, which is just a few miles from where I live. And the first quote-unquote Pentecost church in America is about 25 miles from my house. And uh, the first Pentecostal campground is less than 10 miles from my house. And uh, 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 that was where Howard Goss, who was the first general superintendent of the United Pentecost Church, Received the Holy Ghost in those meetings. And 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 uh, uh, Palm received the Holy Ghost and got on a train, went to Houston. And, and, and unlearned folks, you know, folks that just like us, got reading the Bible and hearing the Bible. I don't know how many millions of people since that time has claimed to receive the Holy Ghost. That's up between them and God. But... It was still just kind of in pockets. But there was, a, there was a, a, a black brother in Houston by the name of Seymour. And those were the days of the Jim Crow laws. And he had to sit outside in another room. He couldn't come in that room. He hadn't received the Holy Ghost, but he believed Parham's preaching. And he got an invitation to come to Los Angeles. And he went there, a place called Bonnie Bray Street. And... Uh, he began to preach the Holy Ghost baptism, speaking in tongues. And just so you'd know, Parm was walking down the road one day and said, the Lord spoke to him and said, why don't you do it like they did in Acts? And uh, he said, what, Lord? He said, baptize. And he, he baptized all of his converts. All of his early converts were baptized in Jesus' name, just so you'd know that. They didn't make an emphasis of it, but they were baptized in Jesus' name. But uh, it Brother Seymour, they got having such crowds. He received the Holy Ghost at Bonnie Bray. They got having such crowd. They, they rented an old stable. And uh, 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 they said he was a very humble guy and very backward. Said he'd sit behind the pulpit with a shoebox on his head. And uh, folks receiving the Holy Ghost. Said, of course, at that time... Uh, folks was coming into the West Coast from all over the world. Chinese people would walk by that little old stable and they'd hear somebody speaking in Chinese telling them they needed to repent. From various languages, missionaries went out from all over and little old, little old stable and, and uh, illiterate preacher and God through the Holy Ghost raised up a, 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 a great movement I'm going to tell you, when God gets ready to do something, He don't need the professor. He don't need machinery. He don't, he don't even need, need talent. All He needs is somebody that's hungry after God. Oh, God, I wish in this 2018, we could find some folks that are just hungry after God. Fill me, God. Use me, God. Lead me, God. But it wasn't long, it wasn't long till the 
you know, they, they, they say, this is not going to work what we're doing. So they decided to form a general assembly. They were in Hot Springs, Arkansas in 1914. They formed the, what was then called the General Assemblies of the Assemblies of God, which is not even a 30-second cousin to the Assemblies of God that we have today. They don't resemble at all. And, uh, but Brother uh, Turner, their main quest was they were just going to seek God and let God lead them, let God talk to them. This is all new to them. But right outside of Los Angeles again in, in a camp meeting, there was a preacher from Canada, and his name slips me right now, but got up to preach and said, Nowhere! In your Bible, was anybody baptized saying words, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? And it put a shockwave in that camp meeting. A guy by the name of John Shep said he read and prayed all night long and began to run through the camp and say, I see it, I see it. And uh, two men that were there that heard it was Frank Ewart and Glenn Cook. They went to Brother uh, Ewart's church, baptized each other 